the World Stone. It was the power of creation and the birth of our eternal conflict. The World Stone is a reality shaping artifact and has in some way, shape or form been at the center of each Diablo game's plot thus far. From its use in the creation of Sanctuary during the Sin War, to its fragments being used to create Soul Stones to corrupt and transform Prince Ulbricht into the Lord of Terror in Diablo 1. Then after his defeat, embedded in the head of his brother, the warrior Aiden to becoming more of a direct focal point in Diablo 2. And by the culmination of the Lord of Destruction expansion, the World Stone was shattered by the Archangel Tyrael, having dire and unknown effects on the world of Sanctuary. Plus, even when shattered, it's proven formidable as by Diablo 3, a greater piece of the Shattered Stone was used to trap all evils, creating an all-powerful prime evil. And even Diablo Immortal, the upcoming mobile title is confirmed to center around collecting fragments of, you guessed it, the World Stone. But how much deeper does the rabbit hole go? What are its true powers when formed or in pieces? And more importantly, what is the truth behind the World Stone for the plot of Diablo 4? And so, I gave my life to destroy it. The dawn of creation in Diablo's universe began, much like any other story, with a bang. Anu, the diamond warrior, and Tathomet, the primeval, engaged in a cosmic struggle that resulted in a release of energy that would give birth to everything in the universe. Pieces of Anu's physical body would scatter across the cosmos, his spine at the pinnacle of the high heavens, while Tathomet, the dragon's rotting corpse, would form the bulk of the burning hells. And while some scholars have questioned if this was more of a fable to describe the beginning of everything, at the heart of it all, we know, in a place formed of the chaotic energies from their encounter, was pandemonium and would sit the Eye of Anu, also known as the World Stone. The power of the Eye gives the one who controls it the ability to alter reality itself. Naturally, it would exist as the main focus of the eternal conflict and used by heaven and hell to create worlds for whoever controlled it. And they would create worlds of perfect order governed by the high heavens or pure chaos ruled by the burning hells. However, none of them actually survived for long. That was until Sanctuary. After Sanctuary's creation by the rogue demon and angel Lilith and Nanarius respectively, they sought refuge from the eternal conflict, which we discussed in our Lilith and Nanarius videos respectively as well. Sanctuary would go on to exist as the only world created by the World Stone that would thrive outside of the eternal conflict. And this is largely due to it being hidden in a separate reality away from the forces of the high heavens and the burning hells. But even after its discovery, the harmony of the union between rebels of those rival forces would prove to ensure its survival. Powerful tribes of Nephilim were spawned of the union between angel and demon and would form to protect the world stone and fight to keep the forces of heaven and hell from influencing the world. The barbarians of Ariat, the priests of Rathma, and the Askari tribe, members of the mage clans that formed the Herodrum, were just to name a few. But it was the Eddy Room that would see the World Stone become the core of more than just the world. However, the power of the World Stone was altered by Inarius to strip the Nephilim of their powers slowly over time to make sure they didn't outgrow the angel and demon alike as they became aware there was something more powerful than them and it scared them very greatly and it would also be, later, the key to restore them. First, Lilith, the mother of man, would attempt to restore her children to their former glory, but it was the Edirim's leader, Uldissian, his will that would advance their powers at an explosive rate. Uldissian's power would grow so swiftly that he wouldn't have enough time to properly control it, and came to the realization that his power, in connection with the World Stone, was tearing Sanctuary apart at its seams. In a final sacrifice, he passed through everything everything, his energy permeating time and space, and he would pass through the World Stone and Sanctuary itself, linking the two, changing the course of the world forever, and banishing the forces of heaven and hell from Sanctuary for a time. The first sign shall appear in the heavens. Justice shall fall upon the world of men. 
the prophecy that was front and center in Diablo 3 focused on a lot of angels, their aspects, and what was to become of them, which we saw throughout the storyline, such as the Archangel Imperius and his valor turning to wrath or Tyriel embodying justice and as it falls to the world of men, which we saw very literally. However, there's one line, fate lies shattered forever. And the key word in this is shattered and how it could be linked to the world stone. Now, this line can be argued to refer to the realms of fate. They began to form as a result of the destruction of Diablo in heaven, the crystals in the library of fate rupturing and tearing rifts in space. Similarly, rifts exist on sanctuary and are accessible via a monolith controlled by the Nephilim spirit, Aurek. And wouldn't you know it, within copious amounts of mysterious currency called blood shards. Interestingly, the description of which points to the possibility that they're either trapped demon souls, crystallized ancient blood, or shards of the world stone. But if the world stone was a reality altering artifact and it shattered, what would its purpose be? Well, given the nature of the Worldstone and its connection to the Nephilim, since Aldisian gave his life and tied them together, it could be all three. And even Zoltan Kuhl would observe that the similarities between the properties of the Soul Stones formed from fragments of the Worldstone and humanity would lead to his theories on the Nephilim and the Stones. Speaking to slivers of the Worldstone and its power, in our video on Bale's genius, we examine how infusing Bale's shard of destruction was meant to ultimately corrupt the denizens of Sanctuary for his use by the Burning Hells, essentially shoving it into the Worldstone and then it permeates across Sanctuary. Now this of course was thwarted by material sacrifice in the Worldstone's destruction, but this was not the end for the Eye of Anu. Though the stone would permanently be imbued with Bale's destructive nature, its connection with the fate of Sanctuary and its denizens would begin to manifest during the end of days events of Diablo 3. It serves to reason that the resurgence of the Nephilim during this time and the growth of their power exponentially that we saw in Diablo 3 respectively can possibly be attributed to the spread of the shards of the Worldstone throughout Sanctuary. Now I'm not saying that some type of radioactive power source, but it is curious that the Nephilim started to surge and rise again by the events of Diablo 3 after the world stone had shattered. And this is even seen mechanically in the acquisition of greater amounts of power and increased reserves of blood shards via climbing the ranks of the greater Nephilim rifts. Touching on fate again, Ithereal, the Archangel of Fate, records prophecy seen in the fragments that slump off the crystal arch within the Talasar, the Scroll of Fate. And yet, he cannot foresee the fate of the Nephilim and Sanctuary. This is likely due to Ithereal only possessing one piece of Anu to examine. Now, this fact is reinforced in the designation to the Blood Thief Goblin, those little red imps that drop copious amounts of blood shards. These thieves are referred to as fate peddlers, funnily enough, and thus tie the world stone into connection with that aspect as well. Given its ties to Sanctuary, would likely explain why Ethereal can't see Sanctuary's fate or humankind's. It's an enigma that exists outside of his realm of access. Given that the Angiris Council agreed to not intervene in Sanctuary's affairs, except Tyriel, perhaps Anu's eye was the key to seeing fate. So we know a confirmation that the world stone has been shattered and corrupted corrupted irrevocably so. And also that new Nephilim was popping up everywhere. And also these blood thief goblins are actually collecting said blood shards or shards of the world stone and can see fate. Some of these properties are inherent to the world stone. What's more interesting is that the official outline of Diablo Immortal, the upcoming mobile title for Diablo, is centered around collecting shards of the world stone and reads as the following. The story of Diablo Immortal is set between the events of Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction, and Diablo 3. The world stone lies shattered, yet great power remains within its corrupted fragments. Power that Diablo's minions hope to harness to bring about the return of the Lord of Terror. The Archangel Tyriel is presumed dead and mankind is left to deal with the aftermath of his actions. Fragments of the corrupted world stone taint the land, bringing forth ancient evils who are looking to harvest the stone's power and 
use it to control humanity. Now, we know that things didn't happen exactly that way, that the World Stone was pivotal in Diablo 3 of bringing back the primeval, though it was the Black Soul Stone, still a shard of the World Stone. But it was actually Zoltan Kul, the ex Herodrim, who brought that about. Now, the question then remains that if you can bring back a prime evil with fragments of the World Stone, supposedly, and that his minions were looking to summon him, what wouldn't stop, say, Lilith or even Anarius from gathering up these vital pieces of power, or even the lesser evils, as we know we've seen Andariel and also Duriel, confirmed in Diablo 4 to bring back the prime evil brothers. The most damning official clue that we have that basically confirms there is some form of Worldstone or Blood Shard in Diablo 4 is that one of the official pieces of art for Anarius and the game shows him with presumably a piece of the Worldstone hovering above his hand. I don't believe in any world that Blizzard would commission a piece of art on an official magazine to have one of the lead characters in the Sin War, Inarius, the father of man, who has been front and center in their official assets to have a piece of the world stone or a bloodshot floating above his hand and just, just happens to be there. No, there is something greater happening. Now, Inarius wanted to control the Nephilim and weaken their power, but also bolster his own power. And Lilith herself wanted to rule and to have her children as powerful as they could be, but have some modicum of control over them and their powers. So then it stands to reason that if if the world stone plays into Diablo 4 as it has the ability to change reality and augment one's power and there is a power vacuum with the greater evils not being present at this time that if you were say the daughter of hatred or even the father of man and you wanted to get a foothold in this power vacuum one of the best assets that you could find on your side would be collecting fragments of the world stone I'm not saying we're going to see a giant pile of world stone stones or them bandaged together in some crude fashion, but clearly that type of untapped power in a cache could bolster their power or even be used to summon the prime evils back to the plane of sanctuary or even recreate reality, re-summon Aldician. Their potential, as is their nature, is limitless. But what do you think of the World Stone and its history? It really has stayed front and center as a core plot device since Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 ran with it. And obviously we're already getting hints of its return in Diablo 4. Let me know in the comments below. As always, I'd love to hear from you. My socials are linked in the description as is the Discord where we have great lore chats with the community. And if you wanna stay up to date with the latest lore videos, whether it be on Diablo 4 or even my lore play, please like, subscribe and hit Hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Thanks for watching and until next time, Traveler.